Let's get you to, into that conversation now. And the appetite for foreign exchange trading in Kenya has risen as many scout for alternative asset classes through which they could invest their money. In 2017, the Capital Markets Authority adopted online foreign exchange trading regulations as it sought to protect investors, increasingly taking a plunge into this trade. And in October last year, my colleague Alex Mwangi sought to find out how what the opportunities are for investment in foreign exchange market in Kenya. <laughs> EGM Securities was the first ever regulated online non-dealing forex broker to be registered in 2017. A year later, it began its operations. It's non-dealing, which means then that clients deal on our platform. So what we offer is a platform for people to trade. They can trade commodities, they can trade precious metals like gold, they can trade indices, uh, global indices uh, on our platform. We have actually 200, over 200 products uh, on our platform. Currently, EGM Securities has over 100,000 users on its platform. It is the country's leading online forex trading broker in terms of customer volume. And traders are coming in and saying, can you train me? So we've had classes, of course, before COVID. After, after COVID, then, of course, we had to then suspend classes and do more or less online. Some of them, it actually has become their main hustle, not just side hustle trying something different, but actually having forex trading income as their main, mainstay. In light of the pandemic, what actions or trends have you observed in the forex market? What we've seen is that there's a lot of resilience. Because our markets are open 24-5, you can trade globally over that period. And the volatility you ride, you can actually ride the wave. The volatility, you've seen gold rise all the way to $2,000, uh, you know. And, and that was a great opportunity. And the people who took advantage of that... When it comes to forex versus stocks versus bonds, what would you comment about the average returns for each of them? I think for us what is critical is that the market is open longer. You have 24 hours, five days a week to trade. The, the markets you've talked about are very traditional. Uh, they do uh, six hours a day for five days. The returns are on transaction basis. So when you average out, by virtue of picking small bits as you go along, they could beat those other ones. The only big advantage is that they are very easy to get in and out. So if you got into a traditional bond, it's at maybe 7-8%. That's a whole year. On FX, you can actually do that on one trade. EGM Securities is part of Equity Group, a global fintech firm with a bias towards online trading technology and multi-asset financial products. Alex Mwangi, NTV. Right, Alex Mwangi there, my colleague, uh, of course, bringing us into the conversation of the day. We want to talk about forex trading, which is the process of buying and selling currencies at the forex market. Many Kenyans <laughs> have gone into it. At least 70,000 Kenyans are said to be actively participating in it. I'm sure you've seen adverts online asking you, uh, of course, to try and make an extra income. It's, they say it's one of the easiest ways to make money online. But is it? That's why I have with me in studio this morning, Wycliffe Sewe is the Vice President of uh, Education at Fortune 360. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. All right. Exactly. I, I, as, as I mentioned, I'm really struggling to remember the number of times someone has told me to try forex trading. And, 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 and if you go online, it's very attractive. In fact, on YouTube, there are videos of young Kenyans blowing, uh, throwing notes in the air, talking about how they made millions from forex trading. And the impression is... It's one of the easiest ways and fastest ways of making money and becoming a millionaire, is it? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing that I would want uh, to let our viewers know, mm -hmm. and also you in particular, given that uh, every single now and then you've been receiving this information, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Forex, all right, when it comes to Forex, number one, the beauty or some of the advantages of uh, jumping to this type of business, mm -hmm. it has got what is known as the low entry cost. Mm -hmm. I got the point. Mm -hmm. So with the low entry cost as compared with any other businesses which you have across the globe, it means with Forex you can actually start with as little money depending on the, what the broker is giving you on their platform or depending on the um, um, entry level which the broker is actually allowing to their platform. So with the low startup capital, with the right skills and the right knowledge, you can actually build this or turn this money into quite a lump sum of money, mm -hmm. but depending on the level of skills that you have. Okay. Now, in terms of uh, 
I've seen people also across the globe, so many youth, so many people, uh, terming Forex as a, a get-rich-quick scheme or the easiest way to make more money. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm actually here to tell you guys that uh, Forex is just like any other business. It needs the uh, necessary, uh, it needs the patience, the commitment, just like any other business. So it's not. So I'll rather say with proper knowledge, <laughs> it is. With proper knowledge. Exactly. That means it's not. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, but but I, I think that's for people who already know what Forex is and, and are already actively participating or are considering like myself. Let, let, let's just start with someone who doesn't even know and walk them through this whole thing of Forex. Because for many people, it sounds so fancy, but it's sort of out of reach. From basic understanding uh, for a common man, what okay, is Forex? Good. Okay, good. So uh, for the basic man, first of all, let me, uh, let me bring it from the aspect of butter trade mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. i know quite a majority of people especially for those people who have gone to school or for the old people back then we used to be taught about butter trade uh and i i i during the time when i was born also mm -hmm. i found when butter trade was actually being conducted and uh, i'm very much sure there's also some regions uh, still in kenya where butter trade still yeah. gets conducted, mm -hmm. whereby you find someone coming with a sack of maybe maize mm -hmm. and maybe wants to transact it with maybe a, a kilo, uh, maybe a sack of potatoes. Mm -hmm. I get the point. Okay. But that was Back historical. Then. I get the point. Mm -hmm. But now from there on, currencies were introduced. Whereby now when, if one wants to purchase something, mm -hmm. one needs to have money mm -hmm. in order. So for, for money, you can actually, actually exchange your money mm -hmm. to goods and services. Okay. I get the point. Mm -hmm. And then from that point now, the birth of Forex came in, all right? Where, when we talked of butter trade, it was exchange of goods to goods. But now when it comes to Forex, it's now the exchange of currencies to currencies, mm -hmm. buying and selling of currencies. So it's something that started a long time ago. So it's, it's, it's actually been evolving. I get the point. Okay. Yes, with the new trend, given that right now we are living in the digital era. Mm -hmm. Yes. But for anyone who is watching, what is Forex trading? So Forex basically is the buying and selling of currencies online basically there's a platform which actually helps us do that and from the clip which you get with plate mm -hmm. uh in order for you to be in a to be in a position to buy these currencies selling and buying currencies online there's a platform which actually a broker has to give you mm -hmm. right from this platform the broker enables you to actually participate in the buying process and in the selling process so basically what happens is uh in the forex world, we normally have what is known as the foreign, uh, foreign currency pairs. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about the foreign currency pairs, we look at uh, the US dollar, for example, the British pound, the European, uh, the euros. Mm -hmm. We have got uh, Australian dollar, quite a good number of foreign pairs. I get the point. Mm -hmm. So with these foreign pairs, as long as there is business which is being transacted from one country to another country, remember, mm -hmm. someone cannot come all the way from the US and come into Kenya and then they start using the US dollar in Kenya. I get mm -hmm. the point. Mm -hmm. Which means they'll actually have to convert ah. the US dollar to Kenya okay. shillings. Okay. I get the point. Okay. That's not, that transaction now is what is called mm -hmm. the foreign exchange, whereby you are transacting the US, which is a foreign currency, mm -hmm. with the KES, so that at least now you can be able now to acquire the KES to continue mm -hmm. doing your business in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And, and, and of course, then the, the question would be then how do I make money? Because you're just talking about buying and, and, and selling currencies. Where does the Exactly. The aspect of becoming a millionaire <laughs> coming. Exactly. So basically what usually happens is, um, basically what usually happens, just like, uh, like in any other business, mm -hmm. I get the point. Uh, whenever you're buying or whenever you're selling, we normally buy at what is called, you buy in profit. I get the point. Let's say, for example, the economy of a particular country is increasing in value. When the economy of a particular country is performing, it means the economy is stable. It means their currency is also stable. So whenever you come across that kind of a scenario, you just uh, enter into a trading platform. Once you have known the economy of a particular country is performing, you just go and buy their currency pair, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you're buying, what usually happens, what usually happens when you're buying, remember, we normally buy one currency paired with another currency. Uh -huh. So you look for a country whose economy is performing mm -hmm. and a country whose economy is not performing. Mm -hmm. And when those 
currencies are paired, they mm -hmm. form one pair. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, let's work with uh, Kenya shillings and, and Kenya the US shillings dollar. And the US dollars, for uh -huh. example. Let's say the US, the US economy is performing, mm -hmm. all right? And the Kenyan economy, let's say, uh, maybe it's uh, a little bit trying as much as you can to maybe... Uh, we are trying it's to not doing it. well, it's fine. It's you not doing can, well. I get, point. Say, uh -huh. I get a point. So I'll actually be buying... Uh, I'll actually be buying U.S. dollar against the Kenya shilling. So mm -hmm. the difference between the U.S. dollar and the KES, that difference becomes my profit. Okay. I get the point. Uh -huh. Yes. The KES, its value at the point where I'm selling it uh, or its value at the point where I'm buying it, mm -hmm. that difference becomes my profit. Okay. So l l let's, let's paint the picture then. So the, the dollar is selling at, um, at, let's say, 108 shillings. Yes. Uh, Kenyan shillings at the moment, okay? Yes. And I want to make money. And I bought it at 108. At what time do I sell it to make sure that I, I, I actually, you know, make, make a profit? Exactly. So one thing that I need you also to understand, uh, buying and selling don't just, like, happen. Uh, it's not something that you just enter into and then start buying and selling and that. Okay. There are also some uh, things which you need to consider. Uh -huh. So that whenever you'll be buying, to make sure that you buy low when the price is a little bit lower mm -hmm. and whenever you'll be cashing out mm -hmm. you cash out when the price is much higher mm -hmm. so that the difference when you bought when it was lower and then you cashed out when the price was higher mm -hmm. when you work out on that difference mm -hmm. becomes a profit margin so let's say for example the dollar maybe uh let's say one dollar for example right now mm -hmm. is equivalent to like uh, 100 kes mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so what basically happens i can't decide to buy dollars right now all right and now, when the economy of U.S. gains momentum, mm -hmm. it means There's their dollar will be more valuable uh -huh. as compared mm -hmm. to the Ours. KES. Mm -hmm. I get the point. Mm -hmm. So when the economy of the U.S. gains value and gains strength, I'll be looking at a point where I can now cash it out. And remember, when I'm cashing it out now, the value of the dollar when I bought it at, and was, the value which I'll be... 100. Okay. I get the point? Mm -hmm. And the value which I'll be cashing it out, mm -hmm. uh, cashing it out from will be totally different. Okay, Let, let's, let's put some hypothesis there so exactly. to, for, make, for purposes of our viewers. Exactly. So you bought it at 100. Yes. At what time do you sell? Okay, good. So, I bought it at 100 shillings. Mm -hmm. Again, the selling, the selling concept again works totally different. Mm -hmm. So it means now, when I'm selling now, it means the economy of the, uh, the, economy of the US guys is dwindling, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And the economy of the Kenyan is gaining momentum. Mm -hmm. I get a point. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to sell, it means one economy has to be dwindling okay. and the other economy has to be gaining momentum. Mm -hmm. So their buying and selling works in tandem. So whenever you're buying, remember, mm -hmm. you're buying one currency which the economy is extremely performing mm -hmm. and the other country, the economy is maybe dwindling. I, get I, the point. I still want you to yes. stick to the figure. So yes. it's 100. Do I sell it when it's 95 or when it's 105? So remember now, when, when the economy of, uh, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, the economy of, uh, we are working with the U.S. and Kenya, Kenya, right? Yes. So let's say, for example, the economy of Kenya is performing and the economy of, uh, of uh, U.S. is dwindling. Mm -hmm. So I've sold this particular pair. It means now, when the economy of U.S. is dwindling, I'll actually be selling at a more cheaper price. Mm -hmm. I get the point. Mm -hmm. I'll actually be selling it at a more cheaper price. Mm -hmm. So when I'm releasing it at a more cheaper price, you're making a loss. I'm making a lot. Mm -hmm. I get the point. Mm -hmm. So that now, remember, the economy of Kenya is gaining momentum. So we now I'll be converting my US dollar to the Kenyan KES. Mm -hmm. That difference actually gives me money. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, then, then, so if the U US economy strengthens yes. uh, and, and, and the US currency strengthens against the, the Kenyan currency, yes. it gets to 105 yes. and I bought it at 100. Is yes. that the right time to sell? So, okay, good. Uh, I don't want you to get confused along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, we, normally call, uh, we normally have what is called uh, you sell high mm -hmm. when uh, price is overbought. Mm -hmm. And we normally buy low when price is oversold. Mm -hmm. I get the point. So what does it mean when price is high? Mm -hmm. When price is high, when price is high, overbought, it means now most investors now, all right, are looking how are looking into ways they can actually now start benefit because remember when price actually reaches the overbought level, the economy of a particular country is said to crash. I get the point. So when the economy is set to crash now, 
we will actually be selling high with a high price. And then remember when I'm selling, there's somebody, uh, the broker, and the broker's platform, what they're actually doing, they're actually buying for me. Mm -hmm. So whenever me as a trader, I'm selling, the broker actually buys for me. So I'm selling high, the broker buys for me at a, a very low price, and that difference, remember I'm selling high. And that's why I'm telling you, when price reaches the oversold area, the overbought area, we sell high. Mm -hmm. So remember, you're selling at a higher price. Mm -hmm. I get the point. So which means if I'm selling at, a, let's say the dollar is at a, a hundred dollars, and uh, the economy crashes, the broker will be buying from me at a very low cost. Mm -hmm. The broker can even decide to buy at me, uh, from me, maybe let's say at a, let's say, actually the broker will be buying from me at a very higher cost. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm selling at a hundred dollars, the broker can decide to buy from me at 120 or at 110. Okay. So the difference between 100 and 110, the 10 becomes my profit. Okay. Yes. And, and of course, this was something that was initially restricted to, you know, governments and, and, and big uh, institutions. But uh, I think uh, along the way, we are now allowed, even I can trade, right? Exactly. Okay. When was it legalized and what does it mean for me? Exactly. So uh, you can actually, uh, when you look at uh, Africa in general, mm -hmm. for example, all right? When you look at Africa in general, and uh, this is one thing I also want to maybe uh, commend the Kenyan government for coming in handy, mm -hmm. right? Because Kenya is being rated as the second country to get approval or their forex trading to be regulated. Okay. And that's actually the role which is actually being played with the Capital Markets Authority. Initially, for you to participate in a forex trading business, mm -hmm. you actually, you were needed to become a tycoon, all right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, they normally say, who who owns the country, I get the point. Mm -hmm. Who but owns now, Kenya. Yes, who owns Kenya. But now with the introduction of brokerage firms, licensed brokerage firms, mm -hmm. what they basically do, they actually uh, tell you, you actually don't need to have that high amount of money in order for you to participate in the Forex business mm -hmm. because they normally offer what is known as leverage. Mm -hmm. I get the point? Mm -hmm. So this is how leverage works. You come with your $50, all right? And the broker tells you, out of your $50, I'll actually enable you to trade in our platform as if you're trading with 50,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. I get the point? Mm -hmm. So in, in short, the broker is doing for you what is called leverage. Okay. The broker allows you to use minimum amount of capital mm -hmm. to trade in the Forex world where a huge amount is required simply because they're leveraging okay. on what you have. And, and we'll come to the, the downside and, and the positives of, of, yes. of the, all these years of leverage and all that. But, yes. but, but let's just go back a, a step behind and, and yes, say, yes. assume you have convinced me in the last uh, five minutes you've explained, yes. and, and I'm convinced and I'm ready to go into this, and I'm in Kenya. How do I go about it? Okay, good. So that is very simple. That's very simple. And again, uh, one thing that I also want to maybe let you know and the viewers in general, you see, uh, we have been having quite uh, a number of, uh, as you said when we were beginning, there are so many pop-ups which are coming here and there, Facebook ads, people claiming to be uh, teaching simply because it, it has got this uh, maybe uh, flashy, people are fly, more flashy about it. Mm -hmm. In order for you to start the Forex business, very simple, number one, Forex doesn't care about your level of education. That's something that you need to understand. Mm -hmm. I get the point. It doesn't care about your origin. It doesn't care about the country which you're coming from. Mm -hmm. All right? As long as you have got internet access mm -hmm. and a smartphone, okay. you are good to go. So what do you need? You only need to be plugged into Academy, which offer Forex trading courses. Mm -hmm. So long as you're teachable, mm -hmm. you're somebody who is disciplined, you're someone who is patient, mm -hmm. anybody, irrespective of who you are, even a mamamboga outside there on the stall, even mm -hmm. someone who, and uh, from, um, from the academy platform where I normally offer my trading services, mm -hmm. you can actually see I have people across the broad. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day and you I had train them how to trade? Exactly, mm -hmm. that's actually what we do mm -hmm. uh, in our platform. And that's why uh, we normally have testimonies where someone tells you he just used to be a mukokoteni operator mm -hmm. and then he came, across, uh, he came across about the Forex advert, they looked for us, and then from there after learning how to trade, someone can actually be able now to make at least $10 per day, $20 per day, okay. as compared to now, whatever they were doing before. I get mm -hmm. the point. So with Forex, it doesn't matter where you're coming from as long as you've got a smartphone, access to a smartphone, mm -hmm. 
and access to internet. Okay, but yes. there's definitely the, the, the issue of the process now of identifying, I don't know, getting a broker, Yes, yes, uh, yes. Maybe is it creating an account? Just take a, walk us through that, that process immediately after now that you have already trained me in your academy exactly. and I'm ready to, to, exactly. to trade. Yes. So basically what usually happens, <clears throat> basically what usually happens, uh, for you to become a trader, all right, for you to become a trader, of course you'll need to have what is known as uh, <clears throat> a broker's platform. You can never trade without being offered that platform. Remember, mm. it is on this platform where all the currency pairs which you are trading has been loaded into. I got a point. So basically what usually happens, Forex is divided into three key areas. Mm -hmm. We have got the basics bit, we have got the intermediate bit, and we have got the advanced level. So what usually happens, if someone enrolls into our academy, we start from the basics bit, which is what is Forex, all right? And then after you having a firm foundation of what Forex basically means, then now we'll take you to another level of how do you actually get started by helping you choose, of course, the licensed brokers which we have currently in the country, mm -hmm. whom we normally refer as the local brokers. And the beauty is this, uh, the CMA highly recommends, especially for those people who are based in Kenya, try as much as you can to use the regulated licensed brokers mm -hmm. whom we have mm -hmm. within, simply because, uh, of course, uh, there are brokers who have actually gone all those entire processes which are required. Okay will actually take you through all those processes and then we actually ensure that you have your trading platform and also ensure that uh, by starting uh, by having or by putting your first trade so what basically the kind of support system that we have in place we normally have uh, what is called uh, uh, a channel or a telegram platform where for those people who have actually learned all right and they are yet now to start trading or putting their first trades, we have a process or a channel where actually we normally share with them analysis, we share with them what's upcoming, so that it will help you now connect what mm -hmm. you learned in class mm -hmm. and what you're supposed okay. to do on your trading. And, and my biggest problem in this conversation is actually to try and make it as simple as it is, because for most people they are really interested, but exactly. it sounds very far away, okay. out of reach, okay. because okay. Of maybe of the jargon mm -hmm. and the process and the what. Uh, but from the basics of how much do I do to invest and, 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 and that process. And let me just go back to that point about uh, the broker. How do I know? Because there are tons and tons of adverts on Facebook. How do I exactly. know this one is the one that is, 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 you know, certified? Exactly. And that's actually based on what we normally do. Once you have enrolled into academy as an individual, it's part of the course outwork. And uh, we have listed most of them in our course outwork. I get the point? So we normally say these are the recommended brokers which we will want you to use them simply because they're the ones whom we have been using. And uh, depending on the services that they've been giving us and depending on the response which they normally given to us, depending on how they have, uh, uh, they have uh, made their systems easy to navigate, so those are the ones which you normally recommend to you as a beginner. Mm -hmm. I get the point. So, uh, so uh, for you actually to start, you only need you only need as little as fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, depending with the Kenya K KES, mm -hmm. it will depend with the rate at that particular moment. But you just know that with as little as fifty dollars, as little as a hundred dollars, you can actually start your forex trading process okay yes all right but but, but generally for 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 my understanding the, the 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 issue of forex trading has always been an issue of managing your fear on one hand exactly and your greed on the other hand exactly just talk to us about uh, that exactly. very same issue thank you thank you and uh, thank you so much for also asking this because quite majority of people who normally enroll into this business personally have been to the forex field for three years now, mm -hmm. all right? I've been the Forex for three years now. Even me, I struggled with this for quite some time before I discovered how to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. You see, outside here, so many people are being sold to a get-rich-quick scheme, flashy kind mm -hmm. of lifestyle. I get the point. So most people usually come with what is known as a, a short-term or a quick rich get mindset. Mm -hmm. I get the point. Yet Forex, as I had explained earlier, is just like any other business. So once you have come in, there is one thing which you normally take guys through, which is known as the um, 
a risk management process. I get the point. Mm -hmm. So with the risk management process actually helps an individual to know, okay, this is the trade or this is uh, what I'm buying or selling. You need to know this is the amount actually I'm supposed to be risking at every trade I am taking in order for me. So whenever, whenever I incur profits, I profit well from them. Whenever I incur loss, mm -hmm. it's something which can actually be con controlled. Mm -hmm. I get the point. And again, remember, there is no any single business which you can ever jump into without risks involved. Mm -hmm. I get the point. The same case also applies to Forex. It's mm -hmm. only that now we have got mechanisms to put in place to just caution and guide our members to know this is the amount of risks which you can actually put at stake whenever you're jumping into any particular trade. So I'm putting 10,000 into, this, into yes. this thing, okay? Yes. And, and let's just talk, to, first of all, from the, the aspect of fear. Yes. Because yesterday I, I did bet this way and it didn't happen <laughs> and now I'm so scared. I don't know how to move from here. Yes, yes, yes. How, yes. Do, you, how do you work around the issue of fear? Exactly. So basically what happens, and I, I don't want to call it betting simply because... I, yes. I don't want to well, call well, it betting. Well, yes. it could easily be, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what normally happens, and that's why we normally have what is called having a demo account platform mm -hmm. and having your real account platform. Mm -hmm. So with the demo account platform, this is a platform where the broker gives you what is known as fake money or virtual money, mm -hmm. where you practice until you become confident. Your confidence level increases yeah. before you actually start putting the real money on the line. Mm -hmm. I get the point. So let's say all the strategies which we are teaching you, all the analysis which you are doing together with you, the guidance that you're giving to you, we normally, first of all, recommend you start by doing this on your demo account. Mm -hmm. So with the demo account, it will boost your confidence level. Okay. So that now when the moment will come when now you are like, okay, good, all the fear is gone, and now you're comfortable to be taking your own trades, we can now advise you now, you can now go ahead and load your $10,000 into your real trading account. Okay. Yes. So now assume, assume I, 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 I want to buy it, okay, yes. and perhaps wait for it to, uh, wait for a change before I can sell it. Yes. What, 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 what do I look out for as that thing that could trigger a change in, exactly. in, 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 exactly. the, in the fluctuations? Yes. So we normally have uh, three areas to consider. We have what is called technical analysis. Mm -hmm. And from your screen, I can see you guys are playing the charts, mm -hmm. all right? So mm -hmm. normally have what is known as technical analysis. So with technical analysis, basically this involves analyzing chart patterns. I get the point. Mm -hmm. So through analyzing chart patterns, you normally have those patterns which actually predict act of? as pointers, uh -huh. when to buy and when to sell. Uh -huh. And for you to basically understand these chart patterns again, you have to be taught mm -hmm. so that whenever you open your chart, you can clearly see, tell or you can clearly say, at this point, I'll be buying. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I'll be selling. Number two, we have got fundamental factors. And with fundamental, we have got news. I got the point. Mm -hmm. So we normally have got sites which have got uh, this news which affect the currency which ah. are being traded in the forex mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. So you basically know, today is on a Thursday, all right? So before I jump into the forex market, I have to jump into the new, new site, find out which are some of the news released will, will be released for this particular pair so that I know. So there are usually data which are being given for that particular news. So with the data, if you know and understand how to interpret the data, you can clearly tell from the data, I'll be now selling this pair and I'll be now buying mm -hmm. this pair. Mm -hmm. Number three, we have got sentimental approach or mm -hmm. sentimental analysis, mm -hmm. all right? whereby uh, you are trading a currency pair and it reaches at some level based on feeling, based on gut, based on what uh, maybe traders are communicating around because you have got a group or a, um, a network of traders, you'll automatically know where this pair is, mm -hmm. is actually trending at the oversold region mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually getting exhausted okay. and I think I should be preparing for my buys. So for the first, for the first two, it, it clearly shows that you, don't, you have to have some sort of research or something you're banking your move on, not exactly. just waking up and saying, no, today exactly. I want to buy or tomorrow In, I want exactly, to sell. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And that's why I normally say, uh, just like any other career, in Forex, you actually need to be trained. Okay. I get the point. 
Okay. Because, so yes. weekly, if I really want the millions, but come yes. on, yes. Uh, I mean, there, there are risks in this thing, especially yes. the issue of volatility. Yes. One minute this currency is doing very well, I expect mm -hmm. it to appreciate to, uh, you know, the, the dollar to strengthen against the Kenyan shilling and maybe to get to 115 or 120 or something. Yes. Then I'm back and the Kenyan shilling has just strengthened and, and we're back to 90. Yes, 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 yes. How do we work around with all this issue of volatility? <laughs> okay. Um, remember again, we have got quite a good number of uh, tradable instruments, all right? So if one currency pair is volatile, and again, remember again, maybe before I explain this point back home, mm. currency pairs are usually categorized, all right? So we normally have the ones which are highly volatile, mm -hmm and we normally have the ones which are low volatile. Let's start with examples of those ones which are volatile. I get the point. Mm -hmm. So with the ones which are volatile, we normally call them in Forex jargon, cross pairs mm -hmm. or the minor pairs. Mm -hmm. I get the point. So that now when one comes as a new person, I'll actually advise you now, you're jumping into the Forex business. I don't want to see you, first of all, jump and start trading the volatile pairs. All right? So you start from the less volatile ones. I normally call them the major pairs or the USD paired uh, currencies. I get the point. Mm -hmm. Now, with the less volatile currency pairs, all right, of course, with their slow movement, with um, uh, they don't have huge or main spikes whenever there is that uh, increased transaction taking place. Mm -hmm you'll realize now someone can actually adapt and trade these less volatile pairs, make money from them, and then once your confidence level again uh, reaches at a particular ah, level now, you can... Then you can move to this more... So you get the point. Uh -huh. So when you talk about volatility, there is how you can... There is where you can start mm -hmm. as you progress to... Mm -hmm. Because the other level. challenge would have been, I really want to do this. Yes. And most people would want to do it as a, some sort of a side hustle. Yes. But when you're talking about an, uh, a currency that, or, or a currency pair that is so volatile... Yes. Uh, it's like boiling milk. <laughs> one, one, one minute you look one side yes, and the yes, next yes, minute yes, it's, yes, it's yes, gone. Yes. I've heard stories of people who say yes. my network connectivity just became unstable for a second and I lost my money. Yes. So... so uh, and that's why learning is very much important. Like mm -hmm. you see, like uh, that question which you asked, you see mm -hmm. like so many people or so many young people normally come into this business. They just jump in not knowing where to start. Because they want to buy myself a Prado, come I on. I get the point. Let's give a scenario of a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. You're starting or you're learning how to swim. Mm -hmm. Will you just go and jump the into deep the end. deep end? <laughs> and yet it has been indicated there is a shallow end and there's mm -hmm. a deep end. Mm -hmm. I get the point. Mm -hmm. Unless you don't want to heed to the instructions which have been given by the instructor, who is actually telling you, now that you're new into swimming, please don't try swimming on the deep end. Okay. But for the majority of people who normally come to Forex and maybe they claim that they have lost quite a good number of money, I got the point, mm -hmm. they just come and jump into the deep end. Mm -hmm. I got the point. So the secret is to... First of all, start with the shallow end. Mm -hmm gain the momentum, gain the skills as you advance to the deep That end. means it takes time. That means it takes time and patience. And that means it's not a uh, get-rich-quick venture. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and of course, there are other issues of scam. And I mentioned the adverts that we see on Facebook yes, yes, and on yes, Twitter. Yes. And, and, and when I was looking at this, I saw something called uh, the signal sellers scam. There's something called the robots coming, I believe. <laughs> and, and, and the fake broker, of course, the one that tells exactly. you, you know, if you give me me, I'll, I'll make sure you, I double your, your exactly. returns. Exactly. Just talk to us exactly. briefly exactly. about these other risks and yes. how we can avoid them. Yeah. So, uh, and this is, uh, thank you so much also for bringing that on board. You see, um, the kind of awareness which is outside here, and uh, given that Forex is more or less a business which is currently gaining momentum in Kenya, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, as when you were doing uh, your news report, you, we just saw that a CME, uh, getting licenses or starting the regulation process in 2017, mm -hmm. and uh, the broker who the brokers who actually uh, started getting the licenses starting from the year of 2018, 2019, then we have 2020, meaning that 
Uh, Forex business is a business which is currently gaining momentum into the country. Now, those people who normally fall into scammers or into um, getting scammed along the way, mm -hmm. you'll realize the same way you're saying, someone who wants to start today and they want to buy a Prado by midnight. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's very possible. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it's very possible. But you need to ask yourself, all right? Like, for example, personally, when I joined Forex Trading, all right, I was actually, uh, because I resigned three months immediately after joining this, the Forex Trading business. Mm -hmm. And uh, what actually triggered my resigning process, there was a night which I actually made a kill where I actually made my salary in one night. Mm -hmm. And you decided I'm going this way. I get the point. So when I made my salary in one night, that actually made me say, okay, if I can make my salary in one night, then it's something if I give all my mm -hmm. attention and focus, okay. then I can actually make a kill out of it. Now, for you to make a kill or for you to make that instant cash which you're seeing, all right? And that's why you normally have what is known as fundamental, the news, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. News usually operates in different ways. News can actually make you wealthy very fast if you're a fundamental analyst. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it can actually make you lose more if you don't know how to analyze it. I get the point. So if you find someone maybe who like uh, jump into the forex business and then make a quick or huge sums of money, mm -hmm. either this person have mastered how to trade news because with the news can actually make uh, one spike of news can actually make depending again with uh, the volumes which you are trading. Mm -hmm. Only one spike is enough to make you enough cash or more money. Are you got the point? Now, so what I normally tell guys, in order for you to avoid scammers outside here, because at the end of the day, how you have been wired as human beings, we are attracted to get rich, something that mm -hmm. puts money faster into our pocket. Okay. But you need to ask yourself, all right, whenever you're starting a business, all right, how long will I be able to maintain this get-rich-quick mindset? I'm a get-rich-quick money which is coming in, mm -hmm. all right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we want to talk about longevity in the business. Yeah. And that's why I normally advise guys, instead of coming into the business with that get-rich-quick mentality, start thinking about investing in the long term. Start thinking about growing step by step. I get the point. So that... In order for you to avoid scam and in order for you to avoid uh, into the rogue platforms where mm -hmm. people flash their screens and tells you, I can actually double your money, I can actually multiply your money within a yeah. day, yeah. and at the end of the day, they end up dishing up their money and uh, within a short span of second because they needed quick money yeah. and then all of it is gone. Okay. I, I, before we just close the conversation, let me just get some quick feedback with, uh, so that you can respond as we close the conversation. Okay, most if we can get that feedback now. Remember we asked you, have you ever tried um, Forex trading? And if so, would you recommend it? Let's see what some of you have been saying. Uh, right, Dan Abonyo. Dan Abonyo says, yes, I have tried. I would recommend studying it before putting yourself into business. There's a lot to learn, not just selling and buying. Thank you, Dan. Yes. All right, Mark Mad says, yeah, and it's good one though. If not, if not keen, one can be devastated. And then um, Danny Kialo says, here, the broker is the one in business. I'm the product. What are the chances of the economy? Crushing. Thank you, Danny, for your feedback, of course. And then the last one, we have Muyeka Dixon. Dixon, he says, what's the cost for training at the Forex Academy? And how long does it take, uh, take for one to start? Right. That's, of course, part of the feedback that we could sample. And, and we have to close these conversations because we have just two minutes quickly. Okay. But I want you to respond to those issues, especially the one on the cost of the training and also in your closing remarks, perhaps how one can maximize uh, returns and minimize you know, the risks. Okay, good. So uh, with the cost of training, uh, as I told you, I'm a vice president of education in the Fortune 360 platform, mm -hmm. which is an, uh, a global academy with the international presence. And you can actually visit the fortune360.net mm -hmm. and you can actually get started with as, as less as $99. Mm -hmm. With $99 gets you started. Okay. I get the point. Now, 
Uh, the other question was, just remind me. Yes, just how to maximize your returns, of course, and minimize your risks in this business. Exactly. So for you to maximize your returns, uh, and I loved what uh, one of the viewers about actually mentioned. About studying, right? Yes, about studying. Mm -hmm. The only best way to maximize your returns into forex trading, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. just dedicate the amount of your time in learning. Okay. I get the point? Mm -hmm. This is one of the businesses where you can actually learn and earn at the same time. And that's what makes Forex outstanding more than any other career across okay. the globe. In two seconds, for anyone who's still ish, ish about going into Forex trading? So for anyone who's still ish is about going into Forex trading, remember this is the business of the 21st century. This is the only business, once you learn the skill, nobody can actually take this skill away from you. Okay. And you can actually transfer this skill even to your children, even to your friends, even to your neighbors. Okay. Once you get it, that's a done deal, even to your old age. Wonderful. Yes. We have been talking about forex trading in Kenya, the prospects in there, the opportunities, and of course how to manage the risks in there, including scams. Many thanks, of course, to Wycliffe Sewe, the Vice President of Education at Fortune 360 Academy. We go for a quick break, but when we come back, we continue the conversation on digital payments, especially during the COVID-19 period. Good work.